Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are making a savory Dutch baby full of some lovely spring ingredients. basic Dutch baby with no frills or flavorings and today we're going to be building on that recipe but we're going to be adding it excuse me meet my cat everyone so today we're going to be building on that basic recipe but we're going to be adding in a lot of lovely greens and herbs into the batter itself and then once it's baked we're going to top it with some prosciutto some parmesan and a absolutely heavenly hollandaise sauce so let's get started. We had some clouds roll in, so it's a little darker now, but I've got my apron on, I put my hair up, so we're ready to cook. The first thing we need to do is preheat our cast iron skillet with a little bit of butter in it. I'm just gonna turn the oven on to 400 degrees, put about a quarter of a cup or a couple of tablespoons of butter in my skillet and pop that in the oven so that they preheat together. Now, as you can see, I've already chopped up some vegetables here that we had sitting out, and we're gonna make our batter just like we did last time. All the same things, except I increased the salt to three quarters of a teaspoon instead of a half a teaspoon. Other than that, everything else in the batter is the same. And then we're gonna add a little bit of veggies and some herbs, but we're not gonna add all of this. If you add everything, it's gonna weigh down your Dutch baby and it's not gonna rise and poof. It'll still taste really good. It'll just be more like a quiche than a Dutch baby. So let's get started. We're gonna make our batter and then I'll show you how much of our vegetables to add. All right, if you didn't see the last video, the batter is actually super simple, so nothing to worry about there. We're just cracking six eggs into the bowl of a stand mixer. You can use as few as four. It's just going to give you a breadier texture, more like an American style pancake. And these couple extra eggs are gonna give it a fluffier, eggier texture like a Yorkshire pudding. You're gonna whisk those until they're super smooth and foamy and slightly lightened in color. Then you're gonna add a cup of milk and a cup of flour. Now, I have used a lot of different kinds of milk, almond milk, oat milk, non-dairy non options work just fine, but I have used other kinds of flour and they don't work as well, so I would suggest just using white all-purpose flour if you can, and then three-fourths of a teaspoon of salt. All right, our batter is put together. I'm gonna switch out my whisk attachment for this, I think they call it the paddle, the one with a bunch of holes in it, uh, just because we don't want any of the herbs and vegetables getting stuck in the whisk. Now, most of this is going to just be sauteed and put on top of the Dutch baby, but I am adding a little bit of kale and a little bit of leeks just to add mostly color, and then we're adding herbs, obviously, for flavor. So I'm going to strip a few twigs of thyme here. You can use whatever fresh herbs you want. It really doesn't matter. Um, I've done it with marjoram and tarragon and oregano and it's all lovely. I'm just gonna give this rosemary a little quick dice because it tends to be pretty strong if you just put the whole leaves in there. It can be a little woody texturally as well. Now I am being pretty liberal with these herbs. It is going to be quite strong. I like some strength because with a hollandaise sauce or anything that's really fat heavy, I need something to really cut through that. And I, I think the herbs kind of help with that. But now, literally all I'm adding is like maybe a third of a cup, not even, of kale. And the same goes for the leeks. I really just want these to sit and float on the top and kind of brown and create some interesting texture in the Dutch Baby. It's not really to add texture throughout the Dutch Baby or to add any flavor. Everything else is just gonna go on top. All right, our oven is preheated, our skillet is preheated, our butter is nice and bubbly. 
Now we're just going to scrape this off first. We are just going to pour our batter into our skillet. Okay, so once it's in here, I'm just gonna use a spatula, fork, whatever you want to spread out our veggies into an aesthetically pleasing distribution. Now we're just gonna pop this back in the oven and I will see you back here in 30 minutes. All right guys, we've got about 10 minutes left on the clock so it is time to make our veggies and our hollandaise sauce. We're gonna start with the veggies. I'm just preheating a skillet, nonstick skillet to medium high heat on the stove top. Then I'm going to add a little drizzle, swish of olive oil. You don't need very much if it's a nonstick skillet. Then I'm just gonna add all of our kale in here. It doesn't have to be super hot because we're not trying to brown anything. Add all of our kale that we chopped up, which was like seven stems. Doesn't really matter, you can use whatever you want. And all of our leeks as well. Just throw it all in together. Now we don't need it super hot because we actually want to slightly steam these vegetables and get them a little bit softened as well as just barely caramelize them a little bit. Just a touch of color, nothing more. So we're gonna just add the lid here and let that shrink a little bit. And while those are shrinking, we're going to bring a pan with about an inch and a half or two inches of water here to about, about medium heat. What we're going to do is put just enough water in the pan that it won't evaporate, but it also won't touch the bottom of the bowl that you have your egg yolks in. Already busted one, every time. But you wanna just be able to place your bowl on top of the pan and not have any water touching it. Then you're good to go. Now we have our three egg yolks. You can use four if you want more sauce, and a lot of people are crazy for hollandaise, so they'll add a whole lot. I'm just making enough for me and Miles, so three egg yolks should do the trick. I'm gonna add a squeeze of lemon juice here. Just catch the seeds about a tablespoon. You can add a little more if you like it, a little more acidic, a little more bite or less. Just depends on your preference. Now, if you notice the water is starting to come to a boil, turn it down or just take the bowl off for a little bit because you don't, you don't want it to scramble the eggs. The only thing, the only way to mess this up really is to scramble the eggs by getting them too hot. So before my pan gets too hot, I'm gonna whisk it till it's super, super smooth and lightened a little bit in color. And then I'm just going to continue to whisk it as it just starts to thicken. You don't wanna get it thick before you add your butter. So once it has just slightly started to change in texture from the heat, then we can start adding your butter. I'm not quite to that point yet, so we'll wait another minute. All right guys, the timer just went off for the Dutch baby, and it's perfect timing because our hollandaise isn't quite finished yet, and our vegetables aren't quite there. They have a couple more minutes, but we actually want it that way, so by the time the Dutch baby is just cooled, our hollandaise will be ready and it won't have set or formed a skin on it and we can just eat it right away. Oh baby, look at that. <laughs> that is exactly what you want. This makes my heart happy. Look at that. Mm. This is going to deflate a little bit and that's okay. It will still retain some volume. It'll still have that nice crust on it. And while we're making our sauce and our vegetables, it will get to the point where we can eat it. Also, check your vegetables every minute or so to make sure they're not burning and add a little water if you need to to keep them steaming. All right, our vegetables have shrunk significantly, so now it is time to add a little bit of flavoring here. Just going to salt them a bit and add a pinch of cayenne pepper. Between all of the other elements and ingredients that we have going on here, these vegetables really don't need very much at all. You want to keep them pretty simple because um, the hollandaise is going to have its own flavor element. We're adding parmesan, which is a very strong flavor. 
We're adding prosciutto, another very strong flavor, and the Dutch baby also has its own flavor. So go ahead and keep the kale and leeks very simple. We have just a little bit of color on the leeks and everything is nice and wilted and it's perfect. I can just pop the lid back on here, and turn off the heat and leave it. It is just starting to thicken slightly, so I'm going to add about two tablespoons of butter. I'm going to add about six tablespoons total. Once those two tablespoons are totally melted and incorporated, you can add the next two tablespoons and then the rest of the butter here. All right, our sauce is ready, our vegetables are ready, our Dutch baby's done. So we're gonna take it back to the other side of the kitchen and assemble. So I'm just going to assemble everything right here in the pan. We're gonna start with the veggies. And of course you can, if you're you know, doing this for a brunch or something or your Easter breakfast, you can slice it all up beforehand and let people do their own toppings. Um, but for the sake of aesthetics, I'm going to do it all in one piece. Then I'm going to take a few pieces of paper thin prosciutto and just lay them in some nice curls here. I'm going to just add a sprinkle of shaved Parmesan underneath the hollandaise. Now if you are not going to be taking tons of pictures of this like I am, you would probably just want to serve the hollandaise on the side for people to put on for themselves, but I'm not serving this at a party. This is just me alone in my kitchen. So I am going to drizzle a few spoonfuls of this silky goodness right on top here. Just a few nice ribbons. Now you don't have to whip the eggs as vigorously as I did, but I like the volume and the kind of foaminess that it gives, um, especially in this kind of application because it holds up really well. All right, guys, she is done. She's beautiful, and I would love to dig in right now, but I have to take a few photos first because this, like most videos, will be accompanied by a blog post that has more detailed instructions as well as a recipe that you can refer to so you don't have to be constantly clicking through the video trying to find <laughs> the next step. So I'll give you a closer look here. That's all for today guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you make this recipe and if you do, tag me on Instagram or on Facebook so I can see it and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.